Hi, that's me, Erin. And as you can probably tell, I like to puzzle. The only problem with this is the puzzles in progress can take up the entire surface of a table, much to the annoyance of non-puzzlers. Additionally, if you have cats or children, puzzling on open surfaces becomes another problem altogether. It would be ideal to be able to pack up the puzzle and transport it to either a new surface or to compactly store it without destroying any progress that has been made. Current products on the market address some of these concerns, but can be pricey and most are still lacking in either compactness or utility. So I decided to build my own puzzle tray and document my design and prototyping process for anyone else who wants to make their own. The main design requirements that I was hoping to achieve included compactness, transportability of both puzzle and stray pieces, and the ability to transport the puzzle without breaking apart or losing any of the pieces. The design I decided to go with utilizes a bottom tray with removable dividers where stray pieces can be sorted. A board of foam cutouts goes on top to secure the puzzle pieces during transportation. Next, a flat board with a non-slip material provides a work surface for the actual puzzle. This stacks on top of the base and a cardboard box secures all of the components together for easy transportation. To make the plastic sorting tray, I used ABS plastic, a vacuum former, and a rectangular mold. In full disclosure, this process took a few tries to get right. First, the vacuum former I wanted to use was smaller than the base of my original design. As such, I decided to vacuum form two trays and adhere them together for the base. For my first attempt, I made my rectangular mold out of foam board and I tried using 1 8 inch ABS. The resulting mold had low detail, wasn't deep enough, and almost melted my foam board. To correct for these issues, I decided to use 1 16 inch ABS and to make a new mold from wood that was slightly deeper. The result was definitely an improvement. Once cooled, I cut off most of the excess material using a bandsaw and then used a Dremel to remove the rest. The resulting edges were pretty sharp, so I sanded them down until smooth. I then used an X-Acto knife to cut slits into the side of the mold to fit a divider. In my original design, I planned to have multiple dividers, but after vacuum forming the first tray, I decided that one removable divider would be sufficient. Afterwards, I cut the divider out from a scrap piece of ABS using an X-Acto knife and inserted it into the tray. Although my initial plan was to vacuum form two plastic trays, the second mold I made ended up having rounded obtuse edges that even a heat gun couldn't correct for. I believe this happened because the sheet of ABS plastic I used for this mold was slightly smaller than the frame so I could only clamp it on three sides and the plastic wasn't able to vacuum form as effectively. Because I didn't have another sheet of ABS plastic that was big enough to address these concerns, I altered my design to have one tray and one flat piece of plastic, which seemed like a reasonable compromise. Next, I used a standard trifold to make the bottom of the box in which the plastic sorting tray would sit. For the next component that would rest on top of the plastic sorting tray to hold the puzzle pieces in place, I cut rectangles out of foam board matching the sorting tray impression and glued these onto a corresponding board. I originally planned to use ABS plastic for this component as well, but realized that 1 8 inch ABS was heavier than I liked and the 1 16 inch ABS was too flimsy, thus foam board. Next, I adhered a non-slip liner to a foam board that would act as a work surface to complete puzzles. Again, foam board provided a sturdy but light work surface. Finally, I made the cardboard lid out of another trifold and added Velcro straps to secure the top and bottom lids together. And here is the final assembly. Now I can puzzle in peace without losing a single puzzle piece.